Okay, everybody. Welcome to my freedom webinar. So today what I'm going to be doing is taking you through a presentation to provide you with some incredible value that you can take away and implement immediately into your lifestyle because I have been through an experience uh, a over a decade ago through the GFC, the global financial crisis. So I decided to put together a webinar on how to create a lifestyle by design in tough economic times. And the reason I'm doing this, and you don't need to um, really, you'd be under a rock if you didn't know that uh, our world economy is under attack right now. 2020, the word coronavirus, I actually hate saying that word. <laughs> Because, you know, the fear that uh, the media and everyone's putting into the world and, and the first, second, third and fourth tier qu consequences of what's happening, like the airline industry, that affects the tourist industry and it flows into, you know, local retail shops. It's a, an, ec an economic disaster at the moment. So today I'm doing a webinar on what I learned from the GFC, how I recession-proofed myself from that day onwards, from the day I near lost everything to today where I'm absolutely recession-proofed. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit about the strategies and that through today's webinar. So what we're going to do is talk about what I call the Freedom Webinar and how to create a lifestyle by design in tough economic times. And it's really um, a it's an interesting time at the moment um, because there's so much uncertainty that's just been flying around and the media has been really driving fear and creating a lot of hysteria and there's so many people in the airline industry, in the restaurant industry, in all sorts of industries that are just living in fear at the moment. And why I'm doing this webinar really does take me back to uh, at the GFC, like over a decade ago through that 2007 to nine period. And I was going through very similar stage that most people will be going through now. And I made a decision then that really has changed my life in particular over the last 10 to 12 years. So I want to put this webinar forward. And if you're in the same situation that I was back in 2008, 9, 10, um, you know, this is day one for you, but you already may be on a really good pathway to success at the moment. We might be able to really give you some thought provoking ideas on things that you can also do to what I talk to a lot of people that I work with now is about recession proofing yourself. So that's what we're going to be going through in today's presentation. This at the moment, we are barely 60 days into um, all the hyst global hysteria about viruses, global economies crashing, record-breaking days on the stock market tumbling all around the world, and we're only just at the start of that. Um, so you can just imagine we fast forward three months, six months' time, what can possibly be happening there uh, moving forward? So we call this the perfect storm that could crush your freedom. And I've been in this situation, as I said, in the GFC 10 years ago. I'm going to talk about some of the second and third tier consequences that happened to me then that made a huge impact on my business, my life, you know, my happiness. And this is, we're going to be talking about lessons learned from that GFC and my strategy from 2008 to today and moving forward that I use to recession-proof myself in tough economic times. And it doesn't matter whether you're somebody experiencing this for the very first time, like you've been on a dream run, you've had a good business, you've had good financial, you've had good job, you've had good everything. If you haven't experienced the challenges of a recession or a GFC or an economic event that can, something that's out of your control in business, it doesn't matter how good you are at marketing, doesn't matter how good you are at sales, doesn't matter how good your service or product is, something out of your control that can impact you for life. 
All right, so we're going to be talking about that and the strategy that I put in place. And I often talk to people about how to capitalize on big ideas in high growth niche opportunities. So we're going to elaborate a little bit more on what I mean by that throughout this presentation. But I want to backpedal a little bit and share a bit about my story because there's so many people that I'm working with now that do know the story, but there's many people that don't know the story and there's a lot of people that's going to jump on to the recording or the, the webinar later on. Or I may even continue to do a series of these webinars um, moving forward so you know people can learn from you know my experiences and that's really one of the core foundational principles that I always do when I coach people you know if you get a mentor to help you guide you through life they can help you navigate through the fog so you don't make the same repeated mistakes that people make without the mentor, the guidance, and the person to show you exactly how to avoid those things. So my story is going to share a little bit about that. So back in 2002, um, I was a young, upstarted business person. I was around 22 years of age at the time, 21, 22 years of age at the time. Everything that I did in 2002 seemed to turn to gold. Um, I bought my first property then, I got growth in that property. I built my first business then. By the end of my third year, I had a business that was operating with or without me. In fact, in, and you can see what that image uh, here on the corner, in 2005, I was nominated as the 2005 well, not nominated, I won the award for the number one fitness professional in one of the states of Australia, South Australia. I then helped the company scale and expand their business and I went on another dream running business. I owned five gyms at the time. I set up 22 franchises. I helped train over 10,000 people and I'd won many, many awards in the fitness industry. So I was a highly accomplished business person on a really good trajectory and a really good pathway and I I'd, I'd had I think by that time 2007 I bought my fourth property so I was investing my cash flow in business into building wealth through a really safe secure in Australia wealth creation strategy building wealth through property I wasn't so much into the stock market at the time I had a few um, little um, parcels, uh, but I was a, a building business for cash flow, investing into property. In 2006, I really started to educate myself on growing business trends. I was listening to an audio book called The Next Millionaires by one of the leading economists in the world, Professor Paul Zane Pilzer. And he was talking to, to me, it felt like he was talking to me about the next millionaires we're going to be in five key areas in business. So I read that book. Those millionaires are going to be in uh, wellness businesses, distribution businesses, information businesses, online businesses, and home-based businesses. So at that point in time, I said, if I want to be a part of this next generation of millionaires, I need to be participating in one of those or all of those niches. And one of the drivers behind that, so this book was back in around 2006, the drivers behind this whole book and, and ideology was really around the emergence of social media, the emergence of smartphone technology, the emergence of internet tools, like we're doing a, a webinar in 2020 to people all around the world um, and then we're recording it and distributing it all around the world. We're leveraging tools that are out there for our benefit in business. And that was just starting. You think about back in 2006, I put a list of things that were not even in existence there. iPhone, that's got an incorrect spelling. iPad, Kindle, um, 4G, Uber, Android, WhatsApp. So many different businesses didn't even exist back in 2006 and we fast forward to 2020 and a lot of those businesses and technology have shaped the way we do business and destroyed many many industries you know that's a common fact 
what Uber and what all the ride sharing companies did to the taxi industry was destroyed or disrupted their industry. You look at what's happened with social media platforms like Instagram and Snapchat and see what they've done to their industries. One of the things we're going to be talking about in regards to strategy is online. And you think of the emergence of people that are Instagram influencers or YouTube influencers. Back in 2006, that wasn't even a possibility. Now it's the way you do business. I communicate with so many people around the world using platforms like WhatsApp. So the point of this, my mind was open. I was super curious to looking at trends to help scale and leverage my physical business model. So I was scaling and leveraging my business through setting up fitness clubs, buying more fitness clubs. Um, on top of that, helping franchise that company, using cash flow, investing in the property. So I had a really good wealth creation model in place. So business and life was good for my first six to seven years in business. 2000 to 2009, um, the GFC nearly cost me everything. And there's some key reasons why this nearly cost me everything. And if there's one key takeaway, from this, you could be in this situation in 2020. You know, you might be someone that's been in business for five years and everything's been great. You've been getting great traction online. You've been getting really good growth in, in cash flow in business. You might be progressing well in your career. Your investments could be doing incredibly well for you. My first six years was what I described as a golden run. But in 2007, I nearly put my I put myself into a situation where day to day was you know I, I didn't need one or two more bad things to go wrong. My risk management profile was too high. I just thought that I wanted to grow super fast. Um, banks had stopped lending money like they were lending money to me. So I was signing up fitness clubs and I basically, you know, had too much risk. I, I bought three gyms in the space of 18 months and then banks said no. Um, and it was a local business model. There was, you know, a fixed fitness club. Like I didn't think global enough. I didn't, well, I was starting to think like that, but I hadn't really implemented anything into my life to help me there. And the lessons I learned from that situation I had to learn it through experience and I want to share that with you here so you can, uh, moving forward, you can put a really good rock solid plan in place. So I implemented a better risk management profile. So I engage with a business advisor or mentor that all already has what I want in life. They have the investment portfolio that I would want in life. They've had the business career that's been incredibly successful and that, so they can help me navigate through business scenarios. They were a mentor that had already walked the path. So if I'm going to invest in something now, I have an advisory board around me to protect me. Two of the key things that we're going to be talking about for the rest of this presentation. I leveraged Keyword leverage in existing low risk, high return platforms. I moved myself from a localized business framework to a globalized business framework. So I've recession proof myself. So if I had all my eggs in the one basket when in Japan, for example, and the Fukushima disaster happened, I lose everything. If all my business was in Wuhan uh, and business was great for 10 years and then in January 20-something, uh, I'm out of business now. If all my business was set up in Chinatown as a restaurant, I'm effectively out of business now. So I moved myself to a global uh, platform which has allowed me to recession proof myself. So if things don't go so well for me in China, that's okay, I can do business in India. If things are not going so well for me in Australia, that's okay, I can do business in Southeast Asia. So I was, I was curious and thinking outside the box 
But on top of that, I continued my model of building cash flow, investing to build wealth and sustainability. But my investment strategy was not as aggressive because I implemented a better risk management profile where I continued to assess my downside while I'm looking forward for my upside. So my investment strategy was not as aggressive. It was, um, I would call it uh, moving forward fast, but I put things in place that if there was a GFC, which we're, we're effectively at the start of now, I was going to be okay. And that's why I'm recession proof in 2020 and protected and in a good position to move forward from the lessons I learned in 2008. And I thought that that's a great thing to share with you. Some of the things that happened to me during that GFC, banks stopped lending. I signed a gym agreement, so I had all the gym uh, investment and, and commitments and everything in place. The banks wouldn't lend for the fit out. When I went to get my equipment, the US dollar had dropped from in the mid 70s to in the sub 50s. So I was buying my equipment effectively at a, a crazy rate which, you know, that there meant that I'd basically paid nearly, you know, 30% more for, for that equipment. Um, I also had gym member panic. So in this situation when people uh, thrive on the fear of the media, they start making decisions for their family and their future, which is totally, totally what everybody should be doing. But the things that were going were gym memberships, personal trainers, massages, eating out at fancy restaurants, uh, those holidays. So the tourism and airline industry is going to cop an absolute pounding um, because of this. Um, valuations on my properties were a lot more conservative, so I couldn't really protect myself that well. So what I was able to do was implement um, a strategy, a game plan, risk management free, low risk leverage in existing platforms. I mentioned about looking for opportunities in high growth niches as well. Um, and, and over the last 10 years, I've literally been able to recession proof myself, been able to travel all around the world, got a young family now and, and sit in a really empowering position in 2020 where business is great. I'm still making sales all around the world. I've had the joy to be able to present in stadiums all around the world and all because of smart business thinking back then. So I'm now the founder of a, a social media movement called the One Shot Movement, international businessman, uh, just about to publish my first book, You've Got One Shot at Life. I'm a speaker that speaks all around the world. I'm an investor with good in, safe investments. Um, I'm now mentoring many people around the world and I've launched a podcast um, where I've interviewed so far, 30 of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. 30 of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world. And if you're into podcasts, jump on the One Shot Movement podcast and you'll be able to watch or, or listen to those there as well. So what was one of the strategies that I used and why? So rewinding all the way back to the book, The Next Millionaires, the growth industries, the wellness industry, the growth industries, the online industry, the growth industries, distribution industries, information-based industries, and home-based business industries. And they've sort of shaped over the last 12 years many, many businesses. There's so many big corporate companies that have had to downsize. There's so many manufacturing businesses that have had to move their manufacturing offshore or their customer service team offshore. That's because they can't charge uh, for the service or product and pay the staff and make a viable, profitable business. So I was looking for a way to participate in Professor Paul Zane Pilsner's model to become one of the next millionaires. So I did want to be global. I did want to still be in the wellness industry. 
I did still want to um, be online. That's what I'd been looking for for a couple of years, looking for the unicorn to build a business online. Information and education. That's really, really important, especially when you're building online businesses and looking for something to do from home. I'm sitting here now in my house in Melbourne. I have a home away from home down on the coast, um, on the beachfront in Melbourne in my dream location as well. And I can do business anywhere as long as I can get onto my phone, the internet, uh, apps and use tools like Zoom to be able to reach out to people. So in the wellness industry, I was looking for products that were in high growth niches. It's fair to say the word stem cell technology is a word that fits into that high growth niches. I was then looking for platforms that would allow me to distribute. So if I went out to build an audience, I'd be able to get that product that I found and I was able to get it to the end user. There's so many different ways to be able to do that. We mentioned one, influencers. Um, YouTube, Instagram influencers have become businesses in their own right. You've got the 100-year-old business platform network marketing where there's over 100 different companies or tens of thousands of different companies in 100 years that will do the product fulfillment for you on on your behalf. You've got platforms like your Ebays and your Amazon, another way that you can get a product that you find out to the consumer, all right? So I wanted to look for a good product that I could leverage and I wanted to find a new age business platform that was gonna be able to allow me to work from home and build a global online business and I now have business in over a hundred different countries in the world doing that. So I touched on stem cell technology. Stem cell technology was back in 2008, probably the biggest buzzword in, in I guess in the wellness industry. Stem cells are the future of health, beauty and medicine. It was mainstream science. So now hospitals, now universities were teaching stem cell technology. And I thought if I can find products that can influence or govern or be able to leverage the story of stem cell technology and be able to pioneer and educate a marketplace about stem cell technology, that was going to be a really hot um, product genre. So I found uh, online watching an ABC interview, Dr. Nathan Newman talking about stem cell technology and what he was doing using stem cells and he was talking about restoring bones nerves tissues in this interview and he talks about one of his patients where over the two years using his own stem cells be able to fix a a, a gland tumor that was removed from his face and this patient in the interview so if you google ABC interview, Dr. Nathan Newman, you'll hear the story directly, but he basically regrew all the bones, nerves, tissues, and this patient says it all, where he says, I was in incredible pain, I was very um, conscious of how I looked, and after working with Dr. Newman for 12 months, oh, over two years, this is a result that I've been able to have. Throughout the interview too, Dr. Newman explains the power of stem cells. But the key thing there was what I wasn't looking for was doing uh, the medical side of it. I was interested in finding products that you could use a platform to take that product to the world. Dr. Nathan Newman had partnered with a direct selling company to distribute his stem cell cosmetic range called Luminess. And um, that's what was of interest to me. So his uh, stem cell technology implemented into his products and was producing before and after results like what you're seeing on the screen. And this biotech company based in the US was shipping the products into over 100 
countries all around the world. So you can see here the physical change in this picture here. You can see a before and after result using the stem cell technology. We're going to talk a little bit more about the biotech company that was the, the, the distribution platform. You can see here this corporate executive when he started using the products. You can see the physical change. You can see here before and after the physical change. You can see there an improvement there. So then we're talking about number one, we found the product and we're able to leverage the technology. So for me, I wasn't interested in going out there and inventing something or putting millions of dollars to create something and getting a world famous scientist to put their name behind it or doing a joint venture with them because the risk was just too critical. So I wanted to find something. That's a really, really key. If you want to protect yourself in the next year's time, don't try and go and create something. Try and find something that's going to be hot. And then it was about finding the platform to be able to get this product to the end user. So if Dr. Nathan Newman hadn't done a partnership with Jeunesse Global, maybe it would have been an opportunity to go out and meet with him and take that product out into and use in many, many different other channels. So be it that he'd already done an incredible deal with the biotech company in the US, uh, Jeunesse Global, who are based in Orlando, Florida, and that already set up the infrastructure that, that, that had in place through doing business for the best part of 50 years, since the 1970s, and they took the product to the world. So I went and uh, met with them and wanted to partner with them to be able to be behind this product to pioneer a message to people all around the world. So for those that have never done network marketing before or direct selling, I just wanted to bust a few myths for you. This is low risk, low uh, low sorry, high leverage, low risk, unlimited potential opportunity. Network marketing company has the product. They distribute the product. They invest in new market research for new products. They do customer service, fulfillment. They provide you with back office. They provide you with marketing materials. So you can just go in and what I call business wrapped up in a box. Plug and play, go and implement. You go out and share the message and the story and leverage off what they've already done. So the key thing I want you to understand here, like any industry, there's good franchises, bad franchises. There's good corporate businesses, bad corporate businesses. And there's good restaurants, there's bad restaurants. There's good mentors, there's bad mentors. There's going to be good network marketing companies and bad network marketing companies. So you need to go through a due diligence like you would if you're investing your life savings into uh, choosing a company that's going to be a good fit for you. And just a couple of key points on that. Make sure it's as global as possible to leverage social media, internet, and technology. Make sure they've got unique products. Make sure the owners have cash in bank and um, have a, an incredible uh, business experience and make sure that you can get remunerated for your efforts. So if you can go and just take those four key pillars to your research, that will put you in good stead. I ended up leveraging that platform over the last 10 years because they had the products that I wanted to promote. I wanted to promote something in youth enhancement that had stem cell technology, DNA repair, stem cell boosting. Uh, they had products that worked in weight management, products that worked in beauty, products that worked in wellness. So they had a broad spectrum of products. So I wanted to go, they're the products I want. I'm going to leverage this platform to do it. But if that platform wasn't there, I would have looked to do it on other platforms like Instagram, YouTube, uh, used Amazon, eBay, whatever it is, if I found the right product. And it was the perfect storm event. Um, and just a, a couple of minutes just talking due diligence specifically on Jeunesse Global. This is the world headquarters 
based in Orlando, Florida. 100% of that office is paid off. So there's zero debt in the company, which is critically important to understand in um, 2020 because I can guarantee in 2021, this year will destroy companies in network marketing, will destroy franchise businesses, will destroy retail industries, will bankrupt people that own corner stores, restaurants. You'll see the stock market tumble and it'll be an absolute calamity on a global uh, financial environmental situation. It's already happening now. But if you're debt-free, profitable, rock solid with a good track record in business, you are every chance to survive in 2020 into the future. All right. So they're debt-free, profitable, cash in bank and already have the infrastructure runs on the board in business. The owners have done business since the 1970s. Um, they've... They've made millions of dollars in the 70s working on a project with NASA, millions of dollars in the 80s with one of the fastest privately held companies in America in the 80s that was in the Inc. 500 list. They've done business and, and the owners always say, well, we've probably built a bigger property portfolio than we have in business. So you've got the owners and the cash at bank. Uh, here's their growth chart for their first seven years in business, doubled year on year on year, all the way to 1.4 billion in their seventh year. And they've had five successive billion dollar years in a row. Shipped to over 150 countries now, this slide is a little bit outdated. But you can do business anywhere you want in the world where you'd want to do business. South America, Europe, Africa, Southeast Asia, Australia, the Northern America. Uh, there's so much opportunity out there when you can leverage social media, when you can leverage the internet, smartphone technology, you can recession proof yourself with a really good rock solid plan of three to five years chipping away with good uh, a good mentor to give you good guidance to that freedom. Low risk uh, leveraging an existing platform that's already done all the work for you. Youth enhancement products. We talked about leveraging high growth products in deep niches. The beauty industry, massive niche. Skincare industry, massive niche. Wellness industry, massive uh, niche. Weight loss industry, massive niche. A new product every, um, every six to 12 months in these high growth niches and they're all very unique. So imagine being able to pioneer a message out to the world on information platforms that are already got all the marketing material for you, all the technology set up for you, all the products waiting in one of our 40 shipping centers around the world to get out there to the world and uh, the, the investments continuing to grow into more marketing, more tech, more tools, and most importantly, more products. Um, huge opportunity to travel the world. As I mentioned, I've traveled to over 120 different cities in the world. So just wrapping up this presentation, I wanted to set the scene by talking to you and giving you an insight to my real life experiences back in the GFC where I was just cutting it very fine, extremely risky position. One or two more bad things happened in the economy and I was completely and utterly 100% exposed for all business, all finance, all property. But the decisions I made moving forward over the next 12 years recession have recession-proof me now where I can uh, double down and capitalise on the work that's already been done. And it's simply by leveraging an existing platform, uh, leveraging products that are already people are looking for, um, and uh, managing my downside, having good mentoring and advisory, and building cash in business and, and having a really rock solid game plan for my investments. And that's something that I won't be able to talk to people about because hey, I'm not a financial planner, but 
B, every country investment strategy is so different. You know, for me, I've built probably my most wealth has come through investments in property over the years, but that's going to be very different in every single country. But the important thing is having that mentor, that advisor, that guidance to be able to allow you to make smart investments to recession proof yourself for the next GFC, whenever that may happen to help you navigate your way through this situation. And it's going to be tough for a lot of people, but the important thing is, is to start now. And what I'm offering everyone that jumps on this call is an opportunity to speak to me. Um, and we do what's called a road mapping session. And during the road mapping session, it's one hour. We talk about your situation. We talk about a bit more depth about this strategy and this opportunity to see if it's the right alignment for you. We then talk about working with me and a roadmap moving forward for your next uh, 90 days and beyond. The skills that you're going to need to be able to elevate your success. Any... Um, concerns that you may have or misconceptions that you need addressing we do on that call we do onboarding we make sure that you are ready to go plug and play to get started in the business and ready for what I talk about is my training for success all right so anyone that jumps on this call listens to this webinar can simply book it in if you've already received a link, which you may have in the past, you may be able to use that link to book it in, or you can simply send an email um, to Craig, C-R-A-I-G, at craigschultz.com. You will be receiving already emails from me, um, and many of those emails have come from experiences over the last 12 years in business as well. But you can send me an email to ask to be booking in a time. You can share with me your current uh, circumstance if you want to so we know what to talk to about on the call. And if all things go well, we can then move forward in, in the business. I will stress in that road mapping session, I may say no um, because I am looking for people that do have the right mindset they are ready to be coached and mentored. Um, I don't mind being challenged, but I've, I've helped over 100 people earn full-time income around the world with this opportunity, so I know what to do. Um, I'm, getting, I'm paying for my own mentoring from one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the world, and I pay over $40,000 a year for that mentoring and guidance. So I share my investment in 20 years of experience in business, and over half a million dollars I've invested in my own personal growth, I'm sharing that with you when you're working with me in the business through the mentoring and coaching. Um, so I am looking for hard workers, action takers, people with a good mindset, people that are coachable. If, you, if this sounds like you, if you've got an absolute drive for success, and you like the opportunity, I'm more likely to say yes. I only do take four new people on every single month because I want to give them the very, very best chance to win. All right. So if that sounds like you, make sure you book in your road mapping session um, because, um, you know, that there we're going to be able to do a deep dive session. If I say no, it's simply because... Um, you know, you, you might not, ha you, you may not be ready yet to work your way through to freedom. All right. So just have to be honest with people here because my time is precious. Um, I do have over 200,000 people um, that are consumers in my business. As I said, I'm dealing with a hundred different business building distributors from all around the world. So I'm putting my heart and soul into helping everybody win. So I want to make sure I do the very, very best job I possibly can do. So on that note, um, make sure you book your road mapping session. We can talk about anything that may you may be unsure about here. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's session because I am really trying to share with you my real life experiences back in the GFC, which is a bit over a decade ago now. And as these world 
media fear is just spreading out on every news channel, every paper, every talk show, every radio show, every sporting event that's empty stadium, every airline that's cancelling flights. We are actually at the beginning. We're not at the end of this. It's going to get a lot worse. And I want everyone that's connected with me through being on my distribution, my, my list, anyone that I'm partnering with, anyone that I'm mentoring, I want to guide you in the right direction. So on that note, we're going to call this um, off. And uh, if you want to get on to the next one, I am doing another one of these later on today. But I will also be sending out a um, the recording because there's a lot of people that couldn't fit either of those times. Also, just worth noting, if you have a colleague that think you think that this might be good for them as well, book a time in together. So um, I have had people come to me collectively in groups of five before and say, can you mentor us all together? We want to get to freedom together, have fun, do it together, and, and that's okay too. Show them the recording and book your time. You've got one shot, so take it. You live one life, embrace it. Don't let fear tie you down, it'll mess you around. You've got one shot.